What's up guys? So I want to tell you about this story about when Elvis had a number one single stolen from him in 1974. I think it was I think it really would have been a number one song. Uh, this is really a song that fits Elvis. It's from his hometown, Memphis, Tennessee. In 1964, he really could have used a hit song. Um, you know, the British invasion and all the things that were kind of keeping Elvis away from the uh, top 10, at least number 5 spot, uh, you know, 5 and under on the Billboard charts. And Elvis really could have used a hit. And as an Elvis fan, I'm really kind of annoyed by this because so many people, you know, took advantage of Elvis's kindness, his generosity, maybe his uh, naivete. And this is one of those stories. So I know that this would be very interesting to share here. So I want to share this with you. All right, getting right to it. I got this uh, story from one of the uh, books from the Memphis Mafia. It was Alan Fortas. I read this last summer. And actually, it's in a few other books um, that I've read uh, previously. So Elvis was friends with Johnny Rivers. You know, Elvis was friends with not too many people in the business, but him and Johnny became friends. So this incident came in 1964 when Elvis was in one of his homes in uh, California. Johnny was over and talking with Elvis, and Elvis had just cut the song Memphis, Tennessee. It had not been released on the radio yet. Elvis just had the uh, record in his house. It probably wasn't totally finished yet, but he had the rough cut of it and was pretty much going to be the way it was before it was going to be on the uh, radio. So Elvis was really excited about this release. And, um, you know, so he wanted to show his friend Johnny. So Johnny loved it. Elvis played it for Johnny Rivers. Johnny had Elvis play it a number of times. And Johnny's like, oh, I love this song. It's so great. And uh, so what happened was Elvis didn't think anything of it. They had a great rest of the uh, evening, you know, hanging out, chilling at Elvis's house in California. So later on, Elvis, I think it was like the first, maybe that month, Elvis hears Johnny Rivers sing Memphis, Tennessee on the radio. Like Johnny wasted no time in cutting that song and the thing is he not only cut the song and put it out before Elvis released it and Elvis was going to release it that was Elvis's song you know he knew Elvis was just about to release it and he was going to go on the charts it would have been good for Elvis it was a great song it was a great beat and like I said it fit Elvis great Memphis Tennessee Elvis is from Memphis Tennessee it just fit it fit Elvis's voice Elvis had the song down. Johnny Rivers copied Elvis's arrangement and made it so so similar similar to Elvis's version and it was on the radio before Elvis could get his out. So Johnny stole Elvis's cut of this song and put it on the record. Johnny had a number 2 hit in 1964. Everybody thought that was Johnny's song, but it was originally Elvis's song. And he got it out, betrayed Elvis, before Elvis could have got his song out, his version out. And uh, according to the bodyguards, when Elvis, or the Memphis Mafia, not all were bodyguards. But according to the Memphis Mafia, in, Alice, in Alan Fortas' book, Elvis just kind of shook his head and said, Well, hey, I guess if he needs it, you know, let him have it. And Elvis postponed his release of the song because they were so similar that people would have thought Elvis was copying Johnny. And when I read this book last summer and this story, I was like, no, you did not. You know what I mean? And Elvis didn't make a big fuss about it. He, uh, you know, didn't tell the papers about it. He just let Johnny have his hit. He said, hey, if he needs it, hey, I guess he needs it. It was number two hit for Johnny, uh, 1964. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't even know that story. I liked that. I liked Johnny's version of it. And then when I heard Elvis's version later on, you know, I believe it was, you know, um, you remember those box sets that they came out with in the 90s? Um, with, uh, like all the 60s songs uh, from Nashville or something. I forget. But uh, 
you know, that's when I first heard it. I'm like, oh, I like Elvis's version too. That's really good. I wish Elvis would have got a hit song out of it. Well, Elvis should have had that hit. Johnny took it from him. He totally betrayed him. Now, in the book, Careless Love, um, it's talked about that. And Peter interviewed uh, Johnny Rivers and uh, got his side of it. But it's kind of like Johnny denies it, saying, no, it didn't happen that way. And, uh, you know, all of Memphis Mafia, all Elvis's clique says, no, it did happen that way. And I tend to believe that's how it went down. Now, Elvis did not have Johnny back to his house at all. Elvis totally got him out of his, uh, you know, little circle. Elvis got him out of his square. And uh, Elvis didn't, uh, you know, have anything to do with Johnny Rivers after that, which I can understand. But Elvis let him have his hit. Elvis released his later on that year, and, uh, you know, unfortunately, it didn't do as well because, you know, people already heard that song. But uh, this story I wanted to bring to you, uh, it really irritates me as an Elvis fan. Elvis really could have used a top 10 hit, which I believe would have been a number one hit for Elvis in 1964. But uh, the story goes that, uh, you know, like I said, Johnny heard it, copied the arrangements, and rushed it out really quick and got his first big hit off Elvis. Elvis no longer allowed him in his house and he was out of Elvis's group. But uh, that's the story for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. Tell me in the comments what you think about it. And, you know, not only was, you know, Elvis kind of screwed out of that hit, but, you know, it just goes to show Elvis is taking the higher ground. You know, he didn't call Johnny out. He didn't even confront him about it he didn't go to the papers like i said he just said hey you know hey if he needs that hit you know let him have it i guess you know he just kind of shook his head but um i really wish that elvis would have came out with that first in 1964 and uh we all know elvis could have used a hit at that time because you know elvis was in hollywood doing the soundtrack recordings and I think if Elvis would have been the first one with that song it would have been a number one hit for at least a few weeks on the charts in 1964 so thanks for tuning in and listening to this uh interesting story of Elvis in the mid 60s um you know that was the same year he had uh Viva Las Vegas and you know the next year he would have a number three hit with Crying in the Chapel and uh, surprisingly enough, tell me what you guys think about this too. Roustabout was a number one album? How did that happen? I don't know. <laughs> That's still surprising to me. But anyway, um, like the video. Comment down below. Tell me what you guys think about this story too. If you have anything else to add, go ahead and add that. And uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And check me out on Elvis is the Man Instagram. And also, not all of you know, but I have two other YouTube channels. One's about fitness and one's about the Bible. So check them out also. The links are in the description. And the links to Elvis's version of the song and Johnny Rivers of the song is also in the description. So check that out as well. We'll talk to you next time. Remember, Elvis is the man.